Hi there, this is Mrs McTaggart. Thank you for choosing this video. Um, we are going to look at the National 5 topic of factorising and in particular common factor. Before I go into the process of common factor, you should be aware of terms like highest common factor and the word factor in general. Pupils of mine always get confused between multiples and factors. So if I ask you for the factors of a number, I'm looking for all the numbers I divide by. So if I asked you for factors of 60, you could tell me that it divides by 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, and I'm missing one, 5 and 12, and 6 and 10. Probably not the best one to start with because it's got so many factors. But then if I asked you for all the factors of a similar number and I asked you for factors of 48, you could tell me, okay, that's 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, and then 6 and 8. So I've lifted them all in pairs there. Now, there, that's what you'd think of in factors. If I ask you for the highest common factor, then it's the biggest number they both divide by. So you notice they've both got 1, they've both got 2, they've both got 3, they both have got 4, and they both have 6. Oh, and they both actually have 12 as well. So you're looking for the highest possible number there, and in fact, it is 12. So the highest common factor of 60 and 48 is 12. And that's an important part of what we're going to be doing on the, my examples. And to be honest, as I tell my pupils, if you know all your times tables, common factor is really simple to do. So the method we look for is we look at our two terms and you look for a number factor and you also have to look for a letter factor. So that's more obvious. It's a letter that they both have in common. Sometimes it's just a number, sometimes it's just a letter and sometimes it's a bit of both. So be wary. So if you have a look at these examples here, my first one has 3x, it's 3x plus 15. So we're going to follow the steps up here. So we look for a number they have in common. They both divide by 3. So step two says you put the highest common factor in front of a bracket. So we have three bracket. And then you divide everything by that highest common factor. So you divide everything by three. So you do three divided by three, which is one. And there's an x left over there. So you're not going to write one x because mathematically, us math teachers get a wee bit of the ick when we see that. So I'm just going to take that one back out. You never need the one in front of a letter. So that would just be x. The sign doesn't change, it stays as a plus. And then I'm going to do 15 divided by 3, which is 5. It was probably worth mentioning, actually, at the start of the video, the highest common factor is literally putting, um, putting it back into bracket term. And you can always check these back out. A quick check would be to times it back out mentally and see, am I getting what I started with? So 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 5 is 15. And you don't ever have to write that, but you can do it very quickly in your head. Let's look at my second example. So it's not a, a number they have in common. I hope it's pretty obvious they have an x in common here. So this time common factor goes out the front, which is x. And then you're dividing by x. So the 4 doesn't get touched because I'm not dividing by number. x squared divided by x. Well, you're kind of thinking, well, what do I need to times by x to make it an x squared? You should know that x times x is x squared. So this is an x that's missing in here take away sign, and then I've got x divided by x, which is 1. Now, sometimes my pupils don't want to write anything there because they think, oh, the x has disappeared. It's not. Remember, there's a secret number 1 in front of that. And also, I use the example of 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 10 is 1, 7 divided by 7 is 1, x divided by x is 1, anything divided by itself is 1. And it's really important to remember that. Now, sometimes people struggle a wee bit with the whole dividing by x. So I talk about what I call the silly way of doing this. And it's not actually that silly. It's pretty useful because you've probably not been taught a topic called indices just now, which further explains why x squared divided by x becomes just x. But it is possible to see it right sometimes like this. And when you're dividing that by x, it's almost like you're cancelling out an x from each term. So obviously you're left with a 4x and you're left with that secret wee number 1 that's hidden in front of the x. And remember, if you started with two terms, you should have two terms in the bracket. 
So if you think the term's completely disappeared, it's not. It's got a wee sneaky number one. And I'll use this method again because it does help when you start to have powers. And remember, we all do things a wee bit differently. And sometimes that's a bit more visual for people struggling. So let's look at these ones now. So this is as one to, to what I would say the proper nat five ones are. They have a number and a letter in common. So if you look at the numbers first, six and 18 are both in the two, the three and the six times table. So you choose the highest one. So we take out six. They both clearly have an M. So we take out six M. Now here's a six M divided by six M. You're dividing by itself again. So this just gives us one. You could do it a bit at a time and go 6 divided by 6 is 1. M divided by M is 1. Either way, the first term becomes 1. And then in the second term, 18 divided by 6 is 3. M squared, remember that stood for MM. We're cancelling out a little M. So we're left with 3M. Remember, quick check. We'll always see if you've got that right. And then my number 4... We've got a 10AB minus 4A cubed. So 10 and 4 are both in the 2 times table. They both have an A in common, so we take out 2A as our common factor. 10 divided by 2 is 5. A divided by A is 1, so the kind of A disappears. And you're still left with a B there. Take away 4 divided by 2 is 2. And A cubed divided by A... Can I just lower the power by 1? But remember, if you're not sure, think of A as being A, A, A. And if you're dividing that by A, you're left with A, A, which is really another way of writing A squared. So that's those two. I'm going to do a couple more. So 12B plus 20B squared, well, they're both in the 2 and the 4 times table. So we're going to take out the 4 because it's the highest one we need. And they both have a B. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. B divided by B is just 1, or that kind of B cancels out. Plus 20 divided by 4 is 5. And B squared divided by B, hopefully we're all happy now, is B. And on my last example, we have got a 10 and a 15. So they both divide by 5. Now I've got an X squared and an X cubed, so they both have an X in common. But you also have to be careful. You maybe also have to take out the highest possible power. If I take you back to very basic um, like maths question from maybe first year or even primary school. If you were doing 6,000 divided by 20, or let's make it 200. The trick there was you could cancel out some zeros and you would only take out the amount of zeros that were common to both questions. So in this one you could cancel out 2 and this one you could cancel out 2. It's very similar here. I've got x squared and x cubed. That's like having xx and then a triple x. So I can actually take out a 5x squared here. And then if we do our division, 10 divided by 5 is 2. x squared divided by x squared is 1. It's disappeared. Take away 15 divided by 5 is 3. And x cubed divided by x squared. Well, what do you need to times x squared by to make it cubed? It's just another x. And this is the one where it really helps using that method that I described earlier. If you're not sure, that's it. The first term is x squared. The second term is x cubed. You can take out two x's there. So you can really take out an x squared. Cancel them out, you're left with one. Cancel two of them out, you're left with an x. So that's why we're getting a one minus x type thing there. So just remember, there is always a way to check out um, your answers and it's by multiplying it back out and there is no harm in doing that. But I would encourage you, if you are going to do it, do it at the side of your page. Don't do it directly underneath. This is what us markers want to see as your final answers. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that's helped. The next stage after this would be for us to teach a thing called difference of two squares. And if you have a look, I've got a wee video on that as well, which can also be mixed in with common factor. Bye-bye.